you're out here for the new music seminar. You were touching on the state of music in, in terms of how it's changed, especially business-wise and sales and things mm-hmm. like that. When you were younger, coming up, making mm-hmm. music mm-hmm. and just putting it out, everybody loving it to the point of where it is now where um, you know people are trying to figure out what are they going to do with their mm-hmm. music. Where do you think that there's this, this balance of loving the music and being able to handle the business side of it at the same time? Man, it's bad out here right now. I mean, that's, that's really <laughs> it's the bottom line, dude. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's cool we got the internet and downloads and this type of shit. And I'll speak frankly, I think that, uh, you know, it's just a lot of piracy and ro- robbery that's going on, you know what I'm saying? And it's bullshit. People say they love and respect the music, but they really don't people love, love and respect shit, you know, if you ask me. Because it's like, you, you, you pay for things that you uh, consider quality in life, whatever it is, you know, you gotta pay bills or whatever it may be. So if you pre- appreciate the, and love the art and the music, then the fuck you should be paying for that. You know, uh, there's nothing wrong with me giving a gift of music to my friends or the case might be. But, you know, when it turns into a situation where somebody puts out a record, you know, for 99 cents, and it just gets, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and there's no sales and anything like that, I mean, and it just, there's no industry. How can you expect things to excel and grow? You know, like I said, when I was coming up, we didn't know the industry, you know, that kind of thing. We didn't know how we could get paid thoroughly, you know. Uh, we knew that we could get famous, and then from that, that could create, you know, viability and visibility so that we could, you know, get money or pay for it. But, uh, you know, and knowing the music business now, I mean, how can it really support itself if people are just paying, you know, taking and taking and taking and not giving back? And then it also just makes it, puts it in the frame of mind in people's minds that it's not that important. You know what I'm saying? There was a difference back in the day too, which is why I still sell vinyl. Uh, when you get a record, when you get an album, or when I used to get an album as a kid, it's a book. You know what I'm saying? It's got you know, it's got music that goes along with it, but it, you can read the inside the credits. I used to do that all the time. You know, who played on what, the names of the songs, the, 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 the lyrics of the songs. It was, you could get into the artist. You know what I'm saying? And these kids now, and the industry is, that's there now is a very single-driven audience. And they don't get the opportunity to really try to get into the artist. So everything is kind of fast. It's like single after single on this person. And, television, you know, all these things going on, and it's just, there's nothing to hold on to. I guess this is kind of the chicken and the egg question, but, you know, has this been spawned by artists making the art kind of um, superficial that way, or has the downloading culture kind of made the art superficial because they, it's just kind of get it, get it, get it. It's both. Yeah. It's both. Just talk about the spiritual uh, quality of, of uh, making music. Before I used to be a musician that practiced and studied all his life or whatever playing whatever instrument it was, it'd be the bass or the keyboard or piano or whatever the case may be, drums or percussion. And you know, he's with another group of musicians that have studied, you know, are really into the instrument, they love it, you know. They all go into the studio. Then you have a guy that's really musically knowledgeable as a producer and an arranger. You know, and he's putting his energy into it. And then you have the studio guy who's putting his energy into it. Mm-hmm. So then there's a spirit that's there, you know, and there's a quality that comes out of that, you know what I'm saying, and the musicianship and everything else. Now, you have a guy who can go buy an 808 drum machine, you know what I'm saying, a little Casio keyboard that you know, was like novice back in the day and shit, or oh, make, make some beats and shit that just sound like, to me, very unproduced, but they have good engineers. Put it out, boom. Cats are rhyming, rhyming on top. You can't even really understand what they're saying, actually. We were just having this conversation, me and another a couple of industry heads. You know, I mean, to each his own. Um, you know, if you like that that kind of sound, that's cool, 808 shit, whatever. I mean, I'm in the 808s too. When we, were, when we were into drum machines, we were into really freaking the drum machine. Like, we were getting into it, you know, making it do shit that people hadn't never thought about before. Yeah. This stuff sounds like, the same stuff over and over again. You know, so where is it going? Then on the flip side, on the business side, right? Put a record out, like I said, 99 cent, three, 399, and whatever the case may be, fine. Uh, maybe a couple thousand people buy it. After that, they're sharing it. And they're on to the next thing. You know what I'm saying? Because there's not, it's a synthetic thing that's going on too. You see what I'm saying? It's on your computer, goes in your computer, sits in the queue, 
You can play it at will. Yeah, fine. You can try to put it on your iPod, kick it, all that kind of shit. But there's no real connection to that artist. So in terms of um, the solutions, what do you think some of the solutions are? Where any of those discussed in the in the seminar? You know, I discussed them on the side with other people, and my thing is, you know, that's missing. Okay, because the seminar was really about, okay, the industry's changing, it's on the decline. It's like other businesses, uh, other industries. You know, like it has a decline, it does like this, and it goes like that, and it ebbs and flows, and blah, 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 scales, and that's great. But let's talk a lot about why we got here, okay? They were more like trying to, you know, uh, bring uh, solutions to the situation, which are, which are cool, which are saying, hey, we're in this download situation, you know, it's about independent artists, and you guys can go out and do your thing, and you know, these are the mediums that are available to you, kind of thing. My thing is this, the a and guy, the a and woman, those were the players, those were the people that made it happen and said, hey, you know what, that track you got, nah, you need to go back to the studio and do it this way and do that. Artist development mm -hmm. is not there now. Because what you have is you just have people that are going out, you know, making tracks or whatever and throwing them along the net. You know, and so it, it you know, it kind of, you know, devalues music a bit because there was a quality control there before. Now it's not there. So now what's needed is the guy or the female, you know, that goes in and, and helps to usher the artist into the next level. Is is this filtering into house music also? Oh or? man, big time. That's why I said I don't like the term. The music known as house? Yeah, it's, 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 it's bad news, man, because once again, see, it started happening with these producers and people, because uh, it's a producer-oriented industry, you know, mm -hmm. on that level, it's producers and DJs and that kind of thing, and, you know, for them, they're more interested in the hype that comes behind it than being, you know, the man, you know, versus being, you know, a quality artist or producer, and see, that's, that's bad, and then what happens is that they will try to, um, insert themselves as being like, you know, uh, on the same level as somebody who's been in the business for 20 years doing it, mm -hmm. who opened up doors. Mm -hmm. You see, there's no, there's no filter there for them to understand. And they don't go about, you know, uh, the task of actually developing themselves or having somebody to help them develop themselves, gathering information you know what I'm saying? And all the stuff that we took, you know, because we pioneered it, you know what I'm saying? It was not there. You know what I'm saying? We helped to bring it and usher it in. And so, you know, we, we, we applied ourselves with the proper tools. These people are not doing that. It's a whole room full of people that want to be chiefs. You know, let the leaders lead. You know, be apprenticed and then lead. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that's always been prevalent in culture before, but now, all of a sudden, you know, it's like the door's been opened. You know, 